Ulbricht surrenders $48 million in bitcoins to the feds. That's right. Ulbricht gives up the coins. And now the question is this. What, if anything, was the benefit to Ross Ulbricht surrendering his bitcoin wallets to the feds? My name is Paul Gordon, and I am with iState.tv, and this is today's I talk, and as you figured out, it's well, it's it's all about Russ Ulbricht here. So Russ Ulbricht has surrendered his claim to one hundred and forty-four thousand three hundred and thirty-six bitcoins, or or essentially what amounts to nearly fifty million dollars to the federal government through their civil asset forfeiture program. Bitcoin News conducted an interview with Ulbricht's attorney, Paul Grant, over the phone. And if you go to, uh, if you see the YouTube video, I'll, I'll put this in the, the Facebook comments as well. I'll put the link to this article in, in the, the, the comments for this show on the iState Facebook page. You can go to the article and you can actually link and read the full article uh, there. So Grant started off the interview by stating that, and I quote, it's over. This part of Ross's struggle, his fight, is over. But what exactly did he agree to and why? From my take of reading the interview, I don't really have a clear answer beyond the claim that he did so to remove this part of his struggle so that he could concentrate on the business of attempting to overturn or at least vacate the heavy-handed, um, overturn, overturn the, the whole conviction, or at least vacate the heavy-handed two-life-term sentence given to a man for allegedly running a website. Uh, they'll, they'll tell you all kinds of things, but that's essentially what it, bury, uh, what it, what it really boils down to. So in this agreement, it appears that Ulbricht is not only surrendering his Bitcoins, about $48 million worth, but he's also surrendering any further potential litigation regarding this special arrangement. The $48 million, the agreement states, shall be credited in partial satisfaction of the money judgment. Well, I hope your ears woke up when you heard that money judgment. And if you're following this case closely, I'm sure you know exactly where I'm going with this. Now, now given the fact, given this fact, uh, what is perplexing to me is how this agreement really settles the matter at all for Ulbricht. All it really did was remove a bargaining chip, uh, if you will, for Ulbricht in the future. doesn't have that anymore. How much exactly is that money judgment? And you got to go all the way back to uh, May of 2015. In a memo, well, the, for, this is from Vice, and, and again, this, this story is actually linked in uh, the, uh, my article that, that this video is based on. Uh, so it, it says, in a memo on Thursday, government prosecutors imposed a money judgment against the Ulbricht, the Ulbricht, it says that, equal to $183,961,921. They came to that number based on the transactional records from Silk Road showing the amount of, I'm going to put this in quotes, illegal drug sales as $182,960,285 combined with the transactions for quote-unquote fake identification equal to $1,001,636. Ulbrich still has looming over him a $130 million tab to the government, a figure that hardly shows how Ulbricht has put this part of his struggle behind him. And the daunting money judgment, it's, it's actually still upon him. And uh, I do have a link to the full court record. Uh, and also I have an excerpt from the court record, which I'm, I'm, I'm not going to read in the video here. It's a, it's a little bit long. So June H. Kim, spelled J-O-O-N, 
June H. Kim, the acting United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York, released a press release on this agreement. I'm putting air quotes in that, in which the government announced the terms of the deal. The bitcoins were retrieved from Ulbricht's laptop computer. Ulbricht obviously surrendered his Bitcoin wallets to the feds for them to be able to retrieve those Bitcoins. And in the press release, which, uh, I, I, again, the press release is, is actually linked in the article, which is going to be linked both in the Facebook live stream as well as the YouTube video. Kim stated, Ulbricht was found guilty in 2015 after a jury trial of distributing narcotics distributing narcotics by means of the internet, conspiring to distribute narcotics, engaging in a continuing criminal enterprise, conspiring to commit computer hacking, conspiring to traffic in false identity documents, and conspiring to commit money laundering in connection with his operation of the Silk Road Underground website. Feeling something here. I think it's time. It's time for the hat. It's time for the psychedelic powers of the hat. With the psychedelic powers of the hat. Let me degov that statement for you. That's right. I will degov that statement for you, and I am going to put it in the language of the real. Give me some time. Give me some time. Everybody, stand back. Stand back. I got a studio audience in here. It's packed in here. I don't know. I'm not going to show the studio audience, but they're here, man. There's like all kinds of folks in here. Y'all got to back up. Y'all got to give me some breathing space, man. All right. Here we go. Some dude was able to create an anonymous portal that enabled people to exchange stuff with one another without our being able to track who was selling and who was buying what. As could be expected, people selling drugs saw the portal as an opportunity to voluntarily exchange value. As we have been using the criminalization of drugs to control certain segments of society, we found this portal to be a potential threat to our ability to target the people we need to target. Oh, okay. I don't know. I, I can only go so long with degoving uh, statements before I start to feel like... I'm starting to, when, when you do it, yeah, yeah, I mean, for those of you who have done this before, you know, have entered into the DGov state, you kind of understand, you start to, you start to feel like you're one of them, and you're like, I'm going to vote today, <laughs> but you know, it's not really going to help, but, so in addition to that, oh, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not done. I feel more. I feel more. I backed out too soon. I backed out too soon. I feel like, you know what? There's more. There's more to say here. Ready? Hold on. Ready? In addition to that, the fact that this dude created a portal which could potentially enable anonymous transactions, be they for drugs or anything else, really anything else, is completely unset. Totally and completely unset. This is something that we will never cotton to, okay? We have to make a very visible, powerful example of this man to encourage any other people or people from attempting to do what this man pulled off. Is that a flag over there? I feel like salute. Whoa. Oh, yeah. See, you, you start to feel, you know, you, you start to feel things there. So, oh. Uh, and I, uh, in, in the article... Uh, by the way, I have a link to another article that I wrote on why anonymity is such a fundamental threat to nation states. I believe I've made a video on it as well. And I'll have to double check that. I don't remember if I did or not. If I didn't make a video for it, I, I got to make a video for it. So given all this, I ask you, when Paul Grant, Ulbricht's attorney, says it's over, this part of Ross's struggle, his fight is over. Does that jibe with the facts that I've given you here? I hardly think this part of Ross's struggle is over. Unless, unless there is some way that there, there is something that we are not being told that Ross might benefit from surrendering 
uh, well, basically $48 million worth of Bitcoin to the state. A state that will most assuredly use that money to buy toys to hurt more people. So you're thinking like me, what the heck? So this is, uh, this is I'm going to read a little bit part here from the Bitcoin news article that had the, the interview. And I also linked to, to, to that story in, this art, in my article. Readers wondering why Mr. Ulbrich would cooperate in such a manner, especially considering the extremity of his sentence. His attorney stresses how Ross needed to get this behind him. He has so many other battles at the moment, not least of which is appealing to lessen his time. Ross agreeing to settle this case makes it go away. Makes what go away? Does it make the settle the, the money judgment go away? He has too many other battles to fight at this point, battles to find some way to recover his liberty. When asked if Mr. Ulbricht's concession might gain him preferable consideration in higher courts, Mr. Grant answered, absolutely not, not even in the slightest. What this does is free up resources and energy for the larger picture. Okay. Okay. Now, whether that statement is indeed true or not is is absolutely another matter, and I'm hoping the statement is not true. If it's not, I perfectly understand why the attorney would be motivated to strategically make what I hope turns out to be a false statement. I would like to believe that Ulbricht got something out of this agreement. On the face of it, I don't see a darn thing that he's gotten out of this. The timing of the agreement also is very odd, given that it comes just a day after it was revealed, and I link to our story that we just did yesterday, that Ulbrich was to be removed, or excuse me, moved to a prison in Colorado that houses some of the most dangerous, the most violent felons in the U.S. prison system. And remember, he's, he's in prison for running a website. So there are so many questions that, at least for me, remain unanswered in what appears, at least from the outside looking in, uh, like, like, like a sudden agreement. Isn't giving up the Bitcoin some level of tacit admission of guilt? Has Ross Ulbich surrendered? The attorney assures the public that they haven't given up. And if you know Ross's mother, Lynn Ulbrich, awesome woman, by the way, as some of my friends actually do, you know that he has a support group behind him that is determined and committed to do whatever it takes to free Ross Ulbrich. And I don't doubt that Ross has not surrendered. But I'm not sure, unless there's something else going on behind the scenes, and oh, I really, really hope there is. Uh, that 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 we couldn't uh, maybe even we we shouldn't uh, know uh, that surrendering bitcoins does anything to end any part of his legal troubles. By my reckoning, Ross Ulbricht is a political prisoner whose crime is creating anonymity, for which he must pay, and he must pay not just to the fullest extent of the law but is beyond the extent of the law as possible without kicking up too much backlash from the general public that might see their draconian treatment of Ross as a potential risk to their own future well-being. And yes, you should see this case as demonstrating a risk to your own future well-being. Should you decide to make to create something that threatens the myth of the large-scale nation-state. That without it, that we would be lost, hopeless, unable to function. Well, the myth is crumbling, folks. Despite their best efforts to hide this truth from us, it's crumbling. Silk Road was one short-lived demonstration of just how out of date, how impractical the large-scale nation-state truly is. And for that, Ross Ulbricht has paid and continues to pay. As a matter of fact, today he paid nearly $50 million. So my name is uh, 
Paul Gordon. I'm with iState.tv, and this has been your iTalk. And I want to encourage you, if you like the video, if you're watching on YouTube and you like the video, be sure to share, like, comment, blah, blah, blah. Subscribe, and above all else, hit that freaking bell so you know the next time I'm making a video. And if you're watching on Facebook Live, you be sure that you go over to the iState YouTube channel and you like it. And you subscribe to, well, you don't like the channel. You subscribe to the channel and make sure you get the notification because I do a lot of videos on here that never get, well, I, I, don't, I don't live stream. I create the videos. I don't live stream them on Facebook. So this has been Paul Gordon on iState.tv, and this is your iTalk presentation for the day. And I will see you, my YouTube crowd. I will see you, well, the next time I make a video.